Welcome everybody to our weekly gathering where we discuss um, a few of the lessons from the from a course in miracles. And so we continue to do that this week as well. It'll be lessons 337 through 343. And let's begin today with a short prayer like we always do. So if you feel up to it, please close your eyes gently and, and acknowledge yourself gently. Feel the spot that you're sitting on. Feel your body interactively playing with the universe that surrounds us. And let's settle in, breathe in a couple of deep breaths and know that we are. And because we are, we come from the source that is. And therefore the intersection of all that is and us is right here, right now. This is a short prayer from lesson 337. You who created me in sinlessness are not mistaken about what I am. I was mistaken when I thought I sinned, but I accept atonement for myself. Father, my dream is ended now. Amen. And so we open our eyes from the dream and we acknowledge each other in this holy presence, which is again here and now. Marguerite, welcome. So we've been discussing the, the 330s lessons uh, in the range 330 to, um, you know, towards 340. And the, um, the essay that's um, included as part of the 330 series is, what is the ego? We're going to glance through it because we've been talking about it already. And we'll just touch a couple of points here. Um, I'm going to start with paragraph two, where it says, in fear it stands, ego, in fear it stands beyond the everywhere, apart from all, in separation from the infinite. And then in the next paragraph, it goes on to say, the son of God is egoless. So that is our path. In our separation, in the experience of the ego that we also are, we are separate. And so to find our union, our atonement with all that is, our father, we must in some fashion experience the larger part of ourselves, which is egoless. In paragraph four, it says, to know reality is not to see the ego. And this is the construction of who we think we are, is to not see the ego, its thoughts, its works, its acts, its laws, and its beliefs, its dreams, its hopes, its plans, everything that we construct our world around, our thought-based system. And that, you know, that is what we are experiencing right now. So but to know reality is not to see any of that. And obviously our path is through forgiveness. Yet will one lily of forgiveness change the darkness into light, the altar to illusions, to the shrine of life itself. So that's our path, which we know, which we attempt to practice. Any thoughts, reactions to what I just shared? A 
Okay, let's keep going to our, the first lesson in our study today, which is 337. <clears throat> My sinlessness protects me from all harm. Would someone like to read that first portion for us? Maybe even the prayer that we started with. Yes, Keith, son of God, please go. Uh, starting at 337? Yes, please. My sinless, sinlessness protects me from all harm. My sinlessness ensures me perfect peace, eternal safety, everlasting love, freedom forever from all thought of loss, complete deliverance from suffering. And only happiness can be my state, for only happiness is given me. What must I do to know all this is mine? I must accept atonement for myself and nothing more. God has already done all things that need to be done. All things that need be done. And I must learn I need do nothing of myself, for I need but accept myself, my sinlessness created for me, now already mine, to feel God's love protecting me from harm, to understand my father loves his son, to know I am the son my father loves. You who created me in sinlessness are not mistaken about what I am. I was mistaken when I thought I sinned, but I accept atonement for myself. Father, my dream is ended now. Amen. It's interesting that uh, we, we've all been told and we've kind of uh, known for ourselves that in many ways, maybe in, yeah, let me just say that in many ways, the course is very simple. And even in this lesson, it just says simply that we just need to accept our sinlessness and our sonship, essentially. Of course, how we do it, how we practice it is, uh, as they say, the devil in the details, or maybe it isn't. So I would love to hear from you how you, how you, um, yeah, Sharon, why don't you go share um, your thoughts? I'm just thinking that I, I love that the course keeps reiterating that I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is turn everything over to the Holy Spirit and ask to see it through the eyes of Christ. But I don't have to do anything. And that's a big relief because I wouldn't know what to do. Mm, that's beautiful. That's true because from our perspective, and as we've been told as well, I really don't know anything. We don't yeah. know what to do, where to go, what to say, which yeah. is why we have been asked to listen to the, the vo voice for God instead. Ardith? Yeah, Sharon just reiterated what she'd said before, and I go, yay, yay, yay on that. I agree completely. Um, I, the thought that came to mind was I had a conversation a couple days ago with someone. Uh, I, I've been in many, many different faiths and systems, including one in Buddhism, but one of my faith walks was a brief encounter with the Catholic Church. And um, I was speaking with an ex-Catholic who was brought up prior to Vatican II or three. well, the one in, in the 1960s where many changes occurred in the church. And she was telling me stories about how she went to Catholic school, she went to other school, and it was just so ground into her, the concept of sin. It took her years and years really to get, sh shake it off, shake it off. And so I guess my point being is that there are not just Catholics and I'm not downing anything like that. It's just their experience, and you have to say it's legit because they're telling you, and I, I accept it. But I think <clears throat> the big thing that the Course seems to do for all of us is to just pinpoint uh, the, the forgiveness aspect, which is so important and so different from the rest of the world, and also to show how much the egoic environment envelops all the major religions that have any kind of an idea about this as anything that's separative, anything that is, uh, labels us as bad. And it's just a, it's a wonderful thing. I'm just applauding the course this morning for 
just showing us that, giving us that confidence that no, this is a, a human made or quote unquote egoic made concept, and just let us turn around and, and read start to finish in the course a, con- a contradiction of that and a clarification. And I'm so I'm just saying I'm grateful for it. All of that. It's great gratitude. Gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude mm-hmm. towards your expression as well. Peter. Yeah, so this is this is the uh, dilemma. This is the challenge, you know, to see myself the way God sees me, to see myself as sinless. Uh, the Course suggests seeing sinlessness in others. As I see others, I will see myself. Um, <clears throat> but of course, while I think their bodies, it's very hard to see. And, and while I think there are bodies that are attacking me and that are undermining my specialness in some way, it's hard to see them as innocent. <clears throat> but I do like in chapter 31, the Savior's vision, uh, section seven. And I, if I could read this very quick, it's one paragraph, uh, paragraph 11. <clears throat> Yet while you wish to stay in hell, how could you be Savior to the Son of God? How would you know His holiness? while you see him apart from yours. For holiness is seen through holy eyes that look upon the innocence within and thus expect to see it everywhere. And so they call it forth in everyone they look upon that he may be what they expect of him. This is the savior's vision that he sees his innocence in all he looks upon and see his own salvation in everyone. He holds no concept of himself between his calm and open eyes and what he sees. He brings the light of what he looks upon that he may see it as it really is. So once again, you know, um, I need do nothing except to be willing to see the innocence in my brothers and to see and, and in that sense, I see my own innocence because everything is a reflection. We, you know, we know from the course, it's an outside picture of an inner condition. So when I'm seeing guilt and when I'm seeing unworthiness and when I'm judging, that's just what's going on in here, projected out. And so, so that's the opportunity and the challenge for me. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. That was very helpful because it helps us understand how to quote unquote do what we've been asked to do. And this um, always harks back for me to the concept of I need not do anything, I need do nothing. And the way I interpret it for myself, and you know, we've had some of this discussion in the past, I believe, is that I think what it's referring to is I'm. I need do nothing as an ego. As my ego is what I need to let go of. And as an egoic structure, I don't need to, uh, well, I've been asked to not operate from an ego anymore. And that's what the course also says. Otherwise, it's really, uh, yeah. So I'll just stop there. Thought I'd share that. Keith? I agree with what everybody has said so far. Um, I was wondering if anybody else uh, watches a lot of Keith Cavanaugh videos. I don't know who that is. Okay, all right. Um, he has a Sunday Zoom at uh, 1030 Central Time. Anyway, um, to what Manu said, Keith describes it as Uh, we're not doing things, Um, we're not to become a holy ego, you know, by trying to be nice and try to see the Christ in people, that our primary thing to do, and he's a um, a firm student of Kenneth Watney, is that we are to um, look at our um, 
foibles um, with Jesus and uh, Holy Spirit and um, the holiness will take Jesus Holy Spirit will take care of it um, so I'm just trying to contrast that trying to be a holy ego by seeing other people as holy as opposed to just um, seeing all of our upsets as mistakes to be corrected, not by us, but by something higher than us. Yep, yeah, yeah, thank you. Do you have more to add to that, Keith? I guess um, just that, you know, he, he's, it's, he almost comes across as that's the single thing we need to do. He doesn't de disagree with anything else the Course says. He's just trying to help us take the faster path according to what he believes Wapnik believes or teaches. Yeah, I think it's really simple. Oh, go ahead, Johanna. <laughs> yeah, Sharon, why why don't you finish saying what you were going to say? It it may not be so simple to do, but the task is really simple. Forgive everyone for everything at every moment. And when we re when I can really do that, that I will. I, I think I will arrive <laughs> in a constant state of bliss. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose I was going to say, say something similar. It's um, seeing the Christ in the other in the other person and uh, forgiving, etc. And we tend to think we tend to think that we are the ones doing that, but it's not. We have to turn it over. And then seeing the Christ in the other person will come automatically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I there's really nothing to forgive. Sorry? I said there's really nothing to forgive. No, no, but um, you know, the fact that we are here indicates that we still think there's <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But it doesn't change the fact that there is nothing to forgive. Exactly. That's sure. the reason, that's the reason why why um the Holy Spirit can persuade us or 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 influence us or or convince us. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Marguerite. Yeah, what I really love about the simplicity as we're what we're talking about is that, and yet at the same time it's not, but you can still train it, is that. Uh, somewhere also in the course it says I must have judged first and uh, that's that's the tricky part about the ego is that we're not aware of that well at least most of the times I'm not but when I remember it that's when I remember it's in the mind and then when I remember it's in the mind and it's not people or person or this person or that person then the forgiveness becomes the opportunity instead of um, this story or that story or, you know, it becomes, you bring it back to a simpler practice. And that's really what I love about the Course, that it is really pointing to um, how... I don't know, it doesn't feel like the right word, but how much how much choice, how much um, yeah, how much control, and that's not the right word either, but like how much choice we actually have in all of this, even though it doesn't always feel that way when we're stuck in our story. Then when the mind, when you calm down and the mind calms down and you remember what the opportunity is instead of the the um, victimhood then it becomes um mm, yeah it becomes like something you want to do then thank you so much 
<clears throat> Let's move to lesson 338. And if I may have a volunteer to read us this lesson, please. My, oh. oh, okay. I saw Maggie um, unmute. Please go ahead, Maggie. Okay. Lesson 338, I am affected only by my thoughts. It needs but this to let salvation come to all the world. For in this single thought is everyone released at least at last from fear. Now has he learned that no one frightens him and nothing can endanger him. He has no enemies, and he is safe from all external things. His thoughts can frighten him, but since these thoughts belong to him alone, he has the power to change them and exchange each fear thought for a happy thought of love. He crucified himself, yet God has planned that his beloved son will be redeemed. Your plan is sure, my father, only yours. All other plans will fail. And I will have thoughts that will frighten me until I learn that you have given me the only thought that leads me to salvation. Mine alone will fail and lead me nowhere. But the thought you gave me promises to lead me home because it holds your promise to your son. Yeah, once again, simple in uh, the suggestion so in the last paragraph where we have the prayer, the word thought starts with a capital T, uppercase T. So what, what do we think um, is being referred to here? The thought that we're all perfect and innocent, I think. I think you can really only see this symbolically because if you put it into words it's already twice removed i think it's an experience mm -hmm. and also a contrast a small t thoughts to capital t thoughts yeah uh, any any other sharing that's all very helpful thank you Johanna? Yeah, I, I like to think of thoughts that come from the Holy Spirit or Jesus or God as, as inspirations. And then the thoughts of the egoic mind, I think of like rehashing notions. And so that's old news in a new form or sounding new, but it's all rehashed. Whereas the thoughts with a capital T are inspirations and they lift up and they inspire. That's how I, when I see in the course, like, um, the words thought, I always think to myself, is this about inspirations or is this about notions? And that helps me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we've probably heard the, the definition of inspire. You know, we are kind of inhaling spirit, inspiring. So thank you, Johanna, Maggie. Yeah, I was just going to add that I think of the thought with the capital T as the the miracle or the correction. It's like the little T thoughts are the ego thoughts, and they are the only things affecting me, as the title of the lesson says. But spirit can give me the correction to all of them. And I think like Marguerite said, it's it's very symbolic and right, because there isn't really a thought that needs to come from spirit to anything else. But in our experience, that correction, there's only there's only one correction needed for all the infinite thoughts the ego can come up with. Yep, yep. Thank you. I think all of that is true. Okay, let's do lesson 339. Ardeth, if you have your book handy, please read us lesson 339. I'm getting to it. I got to just advance it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, okay. It is, I will receive whatever I request. No one desires pain, but he can think that pain is pleasure. No one would avoid his happiness, but he can think that joy is painful, threatening, and dangerous. Everyone will receive what he requests, but he can be confused indeed about the things he wants, the state he would attain. What can he then request that he would want when he receives it? He is asked for what will frighten him and bring him suffering. Let us resolve today to ask for what we really want and only this, that we may spend this day in fearlessness without confusing pain with joy or fear with love. Father, this is your day. It is a day in which I would do nothing by myself but hear your voice in everything I do, requesting only that you offer me accepting what you offer me, accepting only thoughts you share with me. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it reiterates that we are drawing whatever we are experiencing, we drew to us, we asked for it, and we can choose otherwise. Can I make one quick comment about that? I didn't put yes, up the please. nine, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I, absolutely. And what strikes me about this is that we could almost put in a, a test. This may seem very simplistic, but um, a week, I don't know, or maybe just a day at a time and really make it a point. You know, I will do nothing by myself. I, I will hear your voice in everything I do. I will request only what you offer me, accepting only thoughts you share with me. And every time something else comes up, no matter how big or how small, just maybe a shortened version of that, some little code word from this very prayer that reminds us what we're to do. This is our task for today. It's a loving task, and we're given the strength to do it. And I don't know, I just get the feeling that sometimes we get stuck in the groove where we can't hear those things. Just doing a little ritual like this is giving it a course to the Holy Spirit for direction. But I've, I've used it in other things in small ways, and this seems like a good one here. Get, the, get in the habit of listening only to the voice that we want to hear. Right. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for calling that out so clearly for us, Ardith. <clears throat> Thank you. So leading from that is Lesson 340, which says I can be free of suffering today. Who would like to read that one? Yes, Johanna, please. Father, I thank you for today and for the freedom I'm certain it will bring. This day is holy, for today your son will be redeemed. His suffering is done, for he will hear your voice directing him to find Christ's vision through forgiveness and be free forever from all suffering. Thanks for today, my father. I was born into this world, but to achieve this day and what it holds in joy and freedom for your holy son and for the world he made, which is released along with him today. Be glad today. Be glad. There's no room for anything but joy and thanks today. Our father has redeemed his son this day. Not one of us but will be saved today. Not one who will remain in fear. And none the Father will not gather to himself. Awake in heaven in the heart of love. Oh, that's stunningly beautiful. Yes, it is. I just love, be glad today, be glad. I mean, how, how, can, you, <laughs> yeah. how can you not respond <laughs> yeah. to that? It's just like, yay. <laughs> yeah, that Added was beautiful. There's no, there's no room for anything but joy. And yeah. Thanks today. Yeah. yeah. This is, a, this is a lesson to read every day, huh? Not just on Thanksgiving. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. 
it took me quite a while, which is, I know it's normal on the path to understand not one of us will be, uh, not one of us, but will be safe today. Not one who will remain in fear and none. The father will not gather to himself because, you know, I was like, but how, how, you know, <laughs> it takes a while. It takes a whole lot of practice to understand that sentence. Like one of us, therefore no one is left out. <laughs> just, and as it's course, just my job. <laughs> yes, Marguerite. And as the course says, that is what time is for. So mm -hmm. somehow when time and space came into uh, existence, I guess we just have to go through, uh, and we have the ability to collapse time according to the course by following certain ways. But nevertheless, we do have to kind of go through it and, you know, in our own journey as we gather the the sheep, so to speak, along with the shepherd. Yeah, that was a concept that I didn't quite understand for the longest time. I've shared that before, the uh, story of the prodigal son and why uh, God the Father would go looking for the lost versus the already found. Mm. And so. That's one of the most beautiful, beautiful directions for us. Uh, that, that has always been the passage, of a section that has just touched me so strongly and even more so now into the course. I recommend that to anybody to pick up any version huh. and just sit with it. <laughs> it's just it's amazing. Thank you for bringing that up in a reminder, Manu. Yeah, thank you, Ardith. Let's glance through the next essay, which kicks off the, the 341 and beyond series of lessons. Excuse me. What is a miracle? As we read, it's a correction. It undoes error, but does not, it, uh, this is very interesting. It does not attempt to go beyond perception, nor exceed the function of forgiveness. So as I was reading through this uh, previously, and then yesterday, um, it makes it pretty clear that the, you know, the function of forgiveness and therefore the miracle is in the realm of perception. It's what's been given us in this apparent reality to help us find our home. And it goes on to say many other beautiful things, including in paragraph two, a miracle inverts perception, which was upside down before. And thus it ends the strange distortions that were manifest. Now is perception open to truth. Now is forgiveness seen as justified. So we are asked to forgive, which results in miracles. And then the miracles clarify to us what is really happening. Now is perception open to truth. And then we realize that, oh, so that, that's what forgiveness was for, for help to help us see things as they really are, to see ourselves as we really are. So forgiveness is the home of miracles. And then it, in paragraph four, it talks about why faith is necessary because that's, you know, when we start forgiving, we are doing in faith. We're doing so in faith. We don't even know Initially, when we started following this course, we didn't know why we were forgiving. We had no idea what it's a, the, the effects of forgiveness might bring. But it just kind of made sense. And so in that faith, as we started on this journey, really in, in that innocence, faith was called forth. And so the miracle will justify your faith in it. In our faith, we will call, we won't specify the miracles. We won't know what the miracles will be as they emerge. 
but they will emerge because we have that faith and then they will justify our faith because of its appearance. Uh, Peter? Uh, I didn't want to jump the gun, but what, are you done with, with what you want to say? Yes, yes. Um, we can continue if it makes sense a little bit more, but there's, it's just, you know, it's a beautiful essay and it also ends very beautifully, but um, just had, as we read through any of this stuff again, you know, different, different uh, dimensions of the truth obviously starts to appear every time. So thank you, Peter, go ahead. So um, so I love this section. I love this essay in the workbook. And um, a miracle inverts perception. So this is so, this is so important because what is perception now? Perception now is it's coming at me, right? That's the way the ego perceives. The world is coming at me. Whereas inverting that means, no, the world is coming from me. It's like it's inverting that perception. Now, where I go with this is another favorite section of mine in the text, chapter 27, the healing of the dream, the last section, section seven, um, the secret of salvation is but this. You are doing this unto yourself. No matter what the form of attack, this is still true. Whoever takes the role of enemy and of attacker still is this the truth. And then I'm going to jump down. This single lesson learned will set you free from suffering, whatever form it takes. And you will understand the miracle. You will understand that miracles reflect this simple statement. I have done this thing, and it is this I would undo. So that's the inversion of the perception for me. It's the understanding that I have done this thing, and the miracle is the mode, the vehicle, the, the modality by which it's undone. You know, and uh, that's, you know, that's a lot to swallow. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> But for me, that's the gist of it. And that's, that's and, and so, you know, we like to think of miracles as walking on water and raising the dead. But, you know, for me, the miracle is when my neighbor is blasting the music and I can remember this section and say, oh, that's coming from me, not at me. And in that moment, I can let go of the anger and let go of the, the, the justified, justified anger. Like I'm justified because you're doing this to me. And the Course says here, the secret of salvation is but this, you're doing this unto yourself. Now, I'm not quite sure, I've had this discussion with a few people and I go back and forth. I'm not sure if I'm doing this to myself because we're all one. So in other words, my brother is myself. So what my brother does to me, I do to myself. Or if because there is nobody else out there and it's all just my optical, the hallucination that the Course talks about, the illusion, the dream. But either way, it comes back to, to my, my willingness to let that perception be undone. Thank you. Thank you, Ardith. Oh, well, oh, I didn't think it was going to be this quick. <laughs> I just know I had to do that little thing to raise my hand. Um, yeah, I, I, heard, I heard everything Peter said. I, I get that. I, I guess for me, and this wasn't what I was going to say originally, but I think um, truthfully, and maybe I'm just too simple, but I just, I really don't care which which one it comes from, as long as I as I am willing and I'm open and and let it occur, let it happen. There's the word let. I'm so used to in my old egoic self determining what's going to happen, and, and I run interference. I. And, in sports terms, I guess, rather than just letting it happen. And exactly how I, I realized at the beginning when I started reading the course, I, and I'm not saying one shouldn't try to uh, take it apart and look at it, and, but after a while it just got so clear to me that that was more, for me, was more of a confusion than anything else. So I always really try to accept the simplest thing. And to me, that's that's the simplest thing. And and I love what you said, I think, when you bring it to... Uh, how this is brought to a conclusion it's it's absolutely beautiful it just tells me everything i know if i just sit back and just let it 
absorb or let me absorb it. Miracles fall like drops of healing rain on a dry and dusty world, and that's me <laughs> and and all the one that I'm part of. Where starved and thirsty creatures come to die. That's what we do. But now they have water. Yes, the world is green. And everywhere the signs of life spring up to show that what is born can never die, for what has life has immortality. To me, that my mother would say, very simplistic, wonderful woman, the proof is in the pudding. Well, there's the pudding. And I just love that. And thank you for letting me say that. Mm, thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. There, there was a... Uh, the last bit of the sentence that you read on paragraph five. Um, let me share back. Of course, it's all very beautiful. Uh, but particularly for what has life has immortality. Mm -hmm. There was a quote just a few days ago from the foundation. Let me see if I can quickly find it. It was related to this. And I'd like to read it to us. It says, it's from the teacher's manual 20. Uh, 20. It says, forgive the world and you will understand that everything that God created cannot have an end. And nothing he did not create is real. So, um, yeah. Let's keep going here. Lesson 341. Who would read us that? I will. I can attack but my own sinlessness, and it is only that which keeps me safe. Oh, I can attack but my own sinlessness. So I guess that's, we would say, only my own sinlessness, and it is only that which keeps me safe. <clears throat> Father, your son is holy. I am he on whom you smile in love and tenderness so dear and deep and still the universe smiles back on you and shares your holiness. How pure, how safe, how holy, then, are we, abiding in your smile, with all your love bestowed upon us, living one with you. In brotherhood and fatherhood, complete in sinlessness so perfect that the Lord of sinlessness conceives us as his son, a universe of thought, completing him. Let us not then attack our sinlessness, for it contains the word of God to us, and in its kind reflection, we are saved. Wow. It, the more we get into these lessons, the closer we get to the end, I think the more it's, it feels like the more it's just heaping love on us. Like the more Jesus is saying, you are all that's needed to complete God. And the you being all of us collectively together, the sonship, the Christ. Yeah, yeah, Sharon, and he keeps saying that you are beloved, you are love, you are innocent, you are pure, you are light. Just, yeah, I mean, you know, through a million different ways, the Course is trying to teach us all just that. Yeah. Very sweet. I love that term, the Lord of sinlessness. 
<laughs> sort of like, yeah, sort of like from a fantasy uh, novel or something, The Lord of Sinlessness. <laughs> yeah, that's <it. laughs> Indeed. Okay, so let's uh, repeat the next lesson because it, it is a repetition, except in beautiful new words for us to read once again. Marguerite, would you please read this one for us? Lesson 342, I let forgiveness rest upon all things, for thus forgiveness will be given me. I thank you, Father, for your plan to save me from the hell I made. It is not real, and you have given me the means to prove its unreality to me. The key is in my hand, and I have reached the door beyond which lies the end of dreams. I stand before the gate of heaven, wondering if I should enter in and be at home. Let me not wait again today. Let me forgive all things and let and let creation be as you would have it be, and as it is. Let, let me remember that I am your son, and opening the door at last. Forget illusions in the blazing light of truth, as memory of you, re of you returns to me. Brother, forgive me now. I come to you to take you home with me. And as we go, the world goes with us on our way to God. Mm, amazing. Thank you, Marguerite. It reminds me of the previous essay on what the what the ego is. And you know, we are asked to let that be. And I think the process is laid out here. Let me forgive all things. And like uh, Ardith was also reminding us earlier, and let creation be as you would have it be, and as it is. So in our forgiveness, we just let things be. We don't use our egoic thought structure to define it and give our meaningless meaning to it, which will then remind us of who we are. And then that starts to open the door to the rest of it, it seems to me. And then Jesus even says, brother, forgive me now, because we, you know, forgiveness is asked for in every direction, including ourselves. I come to you to take you home with me. And as we go, the world goes with us on our way to God. That's beautiful. Johanna? Yeah, it reminded me of what Sharon was sharing a little while back. Let me forgive all things. You know, mm -hmm. Sharon, you said, it's really simple. I just forgive <laughs> everybody and everything. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> so you must love this lesson, Sharon. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting how it comes up. And <clears throat> I have to remind myself, to, to do it with every single person, no matter how old they are. Because I, I just realized I'm, I'm holding some feelings against my husband's three-year-old granddaughter because she is so spoiled and acts so ugly now almost all the time. And I, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm bad-mouthing that kid in my mind all the time. And judging her parents for choosing that book method to raise that child. And it's like, oh, it, <laughs> you think you know? It, no, I don't know anything. And I need to forgive that child. You know, she's learning her own lessons, I, which I have no idea what they are and what her parents' lessons is. I know what my lesson is. My lesson is to forgive. And so it's not about age. <laughs> 
Yeah, but also that's too, when you go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I did go for it. Oh, I was just going to say I was uh, quoting Johanna and also to Sharon the idea about it being simple. Uh, the course definitely tells us, yeah, but it ain't easy. Exactly. So that when we get into when we get into those grooves, we realize, okay, this is where the work is. Let me have it, Holy Spirit, and we stand back. And and also, I think it's important too that when we don't snap to and listen right away, and when we kind of react, that's another thing that the ego will use against us. I think we just have to remember this, you know, simple, not easy, but, and just re reorient ourselves in the path that we want to go in. And not not get not another reason for guilt. In other words, just free and easy, just as it says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Sharon, the example you gave is a, a an excellent one because if we are not watching, all of us have thoughts like that about you know something yeah. or the other that is uh, not sitting with us well. Right. And so, mm -hmm. so and that's yeah, the that's, clue. That is the clue. If it's not sitting well with you. That's if it's not sitting well with me, that's something in my mind. It's not something out there. <laughs> it's like, no, no, I want it to be out there. <laughs> the, um, or it does say, how, how does it make me feel? Just throw that yeah, in there. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Mm. Yep. Before, we, before we go to lesson 343, I wanted to make an observation. For those who are on video, you can see the the light shining behind Sharon's head oh, in in the video, whoa. and oh, so um, that's that's a clear indicator. No, we don't want you to take that oh, away yeah. necessarily. Uh, <laughs> that I think that would be like when we are seeing another human visage. I think trying to kind of spot that light coming from mm -hmm. them is part of the trick. So. Oh. And just focusing on that light. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Halo. Yeah. Yeah. Keith? I saw it as your halo. Oh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it is, yeah, of course, it, you, there's no wishing, it's there. We just have to <laughs> spot it, you and I both at the same time for, you know, you each know other. It just reminded me of something when you were saying it, because I can't visually see, but I thought a blind person, they can see that light too. Uh, how they do it uh, is different than our so-called physical vision, but they see that too. So I, I don't know. This, the logical thing would be to look at her halo and say, mm, that's very true. <laughs> and it is. I can hear it. I can hear it in her voice. You see, by the, the, this is one of the advantages I think of hearing and not watching. And uh -huh. I, I don't know. It just came to me that way. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. And for her telling me that she's <laughs> telling us that she was shining like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's amazing when we don't have the use of a particular sense, like in this mm -hmm. case, Ardith, you can't really see us. Yeah, no, that act, <laughs> that activates other capabilities that we also have. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Deeper, a little deeper. Yep. Okay, I think Peter, if you would please um, share your reading of lesson three forty three with us, and and either through this lesson or otherwise, also kind of. Yeah, unless there's a, a conversation that comes from this, also a prayer that kind of leads us to the tail end of this conversation. Wherever you want to take us here. Well, honestly, I think that this this lesson itself is a good way to it, it, the prayer itself is is great. So we could just say this and be done. Yeah. Um, unless we want to have discussion, but I think this this particular lesson in this prayer is beautiful. So lesson 343, I am not asked to make a sacrifice to find the mercy and the peace of God. The end of suffering cannot be lost. The gift of, of everything can be but gain. You only give, you never take away. And you, capital, capital Y, created me to be like you. So sacrifice becomes impossible for me as well as you. I too must give. And so all things are given unto me forever and forever. 
As I was created, I remain. Your son can make no sacrifice, for he must be complete, having the function of completing you. I am complete because I am your son. I cannot lose, for I can only give, and everything is mine eternally. The mercy and the peace of God are free. Salvation has no cost. It is a gift that must be freely given and received. And it is this that we would learn today. And the only thing I would add is that, um, I'm not sure if it's a lesson or if it's in the text, but the idea that God is incomplete without me. Yeah. God is, God is incomplete without all his children. And um, if that doesn't speak of our divinity, What does? Yeah, yeah, what does? I mean, that's, you know, God is incomplete without us. So, so let's, let's get on with it. You know, let's, <laughs> let's get yeah. over, the, let's get over that limited, you know, uh, um, miserable, uh, selfish, self-centered, egotistic orientation and and move back to uh, to to um to complete that the puzzle to complete the the completion of god thank you thank you peter when i've thought about that concept of uh, god being incomplete uh, the way i explain it to myself because uh, technically it seems not possible you know given that Unity is one and one is always complete. Is that uh, part of us, part of our bigger self, which is God, part of God, is focused on this apparent reality. And that attention that we're giving to this reality is what's keeping God incomplete in its glory. Mm. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Keith? Um, the first eight sentences, I, um, there's a lot of you's and a lot of I's. I found myself going back and forth thinking, who's he talking about? And I realized it, it was really fun to realize that it didn't matter. The yeah. first eight sentences are, are you, him or I? So, because um, he never mentioned son until sentence nine. Because we are one. <laughs> yes, because we are one. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Ardith. Yeah, it just reminded me, and that word "sacrifice" just came right up uh, from. I believe it's from the Old Testament in the in the Bible. I don't know where specifically, but it does say, "I desire mercy, not sacrifice," and that is such a big part of so many um, faith paths. Uh, and it's so hard. It always heartened me so much. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and all things are given to me forever and forever because we are created to be he says you created me to be like you so if that's the case then mercy we could translate very simply to me anyway is to love and that's I'm just so grateful for these beautiful beautiful words to us to the one thank you wonderful thank you thank you it's the top of the hour, so that brings this conversation to a close. See you next time. Thank you. Right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.